How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. From time to time, I like to cover a little bit about my net worth. Generally, most of the time, nothing all that interesting happens, but recently something interesting did happen. My last video on my net worth basically talked about how I quit my job. However, my net worth kept on going up. Now, I did not say how much did it go up, but today I'm gonna reveal a little bit about that. Given the fact that my residual income, my YouTube income, all of these together basically is a lot less than my engineering job, you would think that my net worth would stagnate. So I ended my job about two and a half months ago and basically one full month after I checked my net worth and I'm like, oh wow, it kept on going up for some reason. What I thought at the time is, oh well, you know, it's probably because of all these new activities I'm doing. I'm like selling a lot more on eBay. Um, I'm churning a lot more credit cards, so I do get a bit of cash back. However, I do not count airline miles as you know part of my net worth. Airline miles just get separated. So during my first full month of not having a job, my net worth actually increased more than while I was working. This is like mind boggling for me. First, let me cover what I consider net worth, which is including residence, including all assets minus all debts. So what you can do for your home is kind of look around what your home value is worth for comparable homes and then subtract out the mortgage balance that you have on that home. That is your equity in your home. And if you sell it one day, you know, if I sell it one day, then yes, that is the amount that you would get minus, you know, some fees and possibly some taxes. On top of your net worth, you would add any cash you have, any kind of brokerage investment account that's not in retirement, and also Roth IRAs, retirement accounts, anything of value, including, you know, I just bought a gold coin. So yes, you would add the value of that gold coin to it. Now check out my super favorite chart over here of my net worth. I've done this over the past eight years now, uh, where I check um, roughly every single month what my net worth is. And you can see uh, sometime in 2014, it started skyrocketing. Um, basically, um, home value had a lot to do with it because it increased my net worth a lot. However, Recently, home values are not really increasing all that much. It pretty much stagnated throughout 2017. So because of this fact, it makes the last two months of my net worth gains all that much more impressive because it did not really add in the home prices at all. It was like other things that increased my net worth. So back in the day around 2014 or so, um, I was sitting around looking at the net worth because I've been calculating and looking at it and I look at it and you know, I guess I was feeling a little smug about it too. I'm like, yeah, this is great. You know, I'm doing well. I can see it increasing, you know, exponentially. It's not like a linear thing. You know, I'm putting all my effort into it. I'm like, okay, what can I do to reduce my expenses? What can I do to increase my income? So after several years, I came to believe that my net worth is going to increase exponentially. And I drew an exponential line through all of this um, and I calculated that, yeah, it's increasing for at about a 27% compounded annual growth rate over here. And you can see um, the other, the smooth line over there is the 27% compounded annual growth rate. And well, the last um, about nine months or so, you can see that it did not really keep pace. I'm actually not too sad that it's not keeping pace with this 27% compounded annual growth rate mainly because I thought that was crazy. I always doubted it from, you know, at least three years ago, and I'm just really happy that it actually kept pace for three additional years. So I guess as long as it goes linearly from now on, um, I would be pretty happy because I'm in a, you know, pretty happy area right now where I do not actually have to go to work. Um, I have enough residual income, uh, enough income from YouTube to um, kind of sustain myself and um, and then a little bit more. So you might wonder a little bit how I get the price of the home long ago. I just decided to pull the number off of Zillow. You just find your own place and um, you know just take that Z estimate value over there. Um, you can go around looking at all the flyers of comparable homes. I figured that's way too much work. I just rather take some automatic number because I don't want to do an estimation of this home um, every single time I do a net worth calculation every single month. So I know this is going to be, eh, sometimes it might be inflated, sometimes it might be deflated. Maybe, you know, it's really high, maybe it's really low, you know, plus minus 10% is all right with me. So what I attribute to all these gains is basically not working. 
when I'm not working. I actually have so much more free time and you know, you see this on this video, on other videos as well, that I'm doing all kinds of stuff that I would not normally do when I'm working. I just have so much time that I can put some of this time towards earning more money in you know, a lot of different ways. I've sped up my um, eBaying. I do a lot more, you know, right here is just another package already. I think the volume is about two to three X as much as uh, when I'm working. So right there is a little bit more income. Of course, I do note that it's not sustainable because you cannot go around selling all your stuff uh, for money because eventually you'll end up with, you know, nothing left at your home. But in my case, I'm trying to get rid of my stuff. Uh, I just have way too much things and um, it's a positive for me because I can get money out of it and also at the same time, I can uh, reduce the number of things I have. Another contributing factor is my Bitcoin investment. Now, it must have been me not going to my regular job that caused me to have extra time to research into this because without it, I probably would not do it as soon. Um, with that extra free time, I'm like, okay, you know, let me look into this. Let me start some account. And I've been starting a lot of different accounts, uh, left and right. And it's this extra time of kind of applying myself to new income sources that is kind of adding a little bit at a time on top of, you know, my meager income that I think I'm getting right now in comparison to an engineering job, of course. But because of all this activity, I do think that eventually it's going to climb up enough. And right now in the last two months, it has already in terms of net worth that it probably would uh, surpass my regular engineering income eventually. On the horizon, I have two new investment opportunities that I am very, very bullish in that I like to talk about. Now, I already bought into this. Um, I generally like to buy into things without talking about it very much until I have um, the whole sum that I think I'm going to be holding. Um, then I go and, you know, make a video about it and, you know, talk about why I'm so bullish, why I like this stock and why I'm holding on to it. I just kind of like to do things. Uh, watch it for a little while. And then, you know, if I feel comfortable, I'll, I'll announce uh, what particular things are in my investment portfolio. So now let's look at a zoomed in version of the last few months. Every single dot over here represent one single month, but the fourth dot from the right over here is just, you know, additional uh, sampling that I did. Um, I just did another net worth calculation, um, in the middle of the month. That's why you see an extra dot over there. Sometimes you see huge dips. Um, that's really, really big. Mainly. I think these are mainly from, um, big dips in, uh, Zillow calculation. Sometimes they have these wild fluctuations and I don't know why, but I just chose to take whatever it says and plop it into my net worth calculation. It's a good enough measure that I'm okay with. So right around the fifth dot from the right and everything to the left of that is when I still had my job and you can see, okay, I'm accumulating money. I'm getting my paycheck and all, and I'm putting most of this into my savings, but you gotta know, at that time, I also had uh, YouTube income. I also had investment income. I had all this stuff set up already. So it's still a little puzzling to me. I'm looking at it and I, I'm still like not too sure why I'm, you know, like it comes like every little source that contributes to it increased a little bit. And you know, the, the final, final number is the, this net worth number. And somehow you look at the slope at the last two or three dots and the second to the right dot. Oh my gosh. Some, somehow it just jumped up. I quit my job and the slope, you know, it's going like this, quit my job and it goes boom. <laughs> so, okay. So by this logic, I probably should have quit sooner. Um, or maybe, you know, instead of hanging around at home making and making these YouTube videos, I should really, uh, go on vacation or something. And maybe my net worth will go up even more. So what's the moral of this story here? When you quit your job, you have a lot more time. I had a lot more time. I used this time to make more money. I used the skills I learned on how to make more money online investments, every other way. I take the time and I hustle with it. I go, you know, what can I do today? 
I can make these videos. I can do sponsorship content. I can research into investment opportunities. Um, like I said, I uh, found two new op investment opportunities already going forward. And this full-time force of trying to earn money for myself in various different ways is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm not just talking about myself. I think anybody that um, has as much time as I do after they quit their job, they're likely going to be f able to find other ways to make a lot of money as well. Now, is it hard to take that leap of faith? I certainly could not take that leap of faith myself. If suddenly you asked me to quit my job while at the same time I made no side income at all, and then you just tell me to kind of trust in yourself and you'll make something, uh, you'll make enough eventually, then I probably would be very antsy about that. I would refuse to do that because um, I've heard about it before. Long time ago, I went out to eat with some coworkers. We went to this little hot dog stand in San Jose. There's this guy that um, used to be an engineer and he made, uh, started his own hot dog stand. I think it's a sausage stand. And he used to work at, I don't know, Broadcom or something like that. And you know, he just quit, picked things up and started his own very successful sausage stand. And then you look at that and you're like, wow, you know, I wish I had the guts to do that. That's what I thought at the time. I wish I had the guts to do that. I guess at some point I'm like, well, you know, I need to do something. I need to hustle. I need to, you know, make a little bit somehow. How can I make a penny? How can I make 10 cents? How can I make $1 um, outside of work? Okay. Do it any way you can. Do it in a sustainable manner. Do it in a scalable manner. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this update on my net worth. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know if you can take the leap of faith. If you're interested in supporting my channel, check out my Audible link down in the video description below. I also have a Patreon over here where I give perks such as help with your credit score or help with your finances. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.